Oh, yeah, that's better. Thanks a lot, geeks. Yeah, we got the geek meow in there saying I can hear the music. So like I said, hey, getting funky now. All right, cool, with all that, and welcome to the dark side of the room. I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, and today I would normally be doing Buster Recap and all that stuff, but I put out the announcement last week that I'm canceling that show. It's, uh, you know, doing this stuff about streaming services and all that stuff. I would have to chase what's trending and all that stuff, and honestly, what can I say? about stuff that people out there watching that isn't being said by a hundred other people so we're doing more dark side yeah that's right because this is the show Woohoo! yeah um yeah hang on a minute i got one of my patrons patrons okay reload uh you know i really have to learn how yeah i really have to learn how to reteach um, my autocorrect, okay? Because seriously, my autocorrect is like, yeah, today we're gonna be talking about Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. Because, yeah, my friend Gabe is like always around, and I'm like, nah, I mean, I, I love Gabe. I wanted him to be on the show. But uh, yeah, my phone is just talking to him all the time. I wonder if they're like, they got a thing going on while I'm asleep. But anyway, woohoo! So now. We got more dark side. I want to say what's up to my people in the chat. How you guys doing? Um, I'm wanting you guys to know right now. If you guys didn't get the announcement on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook in any of the various groups, today is going to be another serious conversation because, you know, how can I put this? The world is on fire. Okay, the entire world is burning down around us and everything is weird and everything is just like brah, brah, brah. So um, I wanted to talk to you guys about a lot of different stuff. I'm not going to make this like a channel for bread tube or anything like that, but there's a lot of stuff that we got to talk about now. Um, and here on the dark side of the room, we are nothing if we're not honest. Okay, but we are a tabletop gaming um channel along with comics and you know a whole bunch of geek culture stuff so that's the main stuff that we talk about and the stuff that we're going to be talking about through all this stuff is going to be revolving around that stuff okay um so uh put that out there for you new people hey <laughs> uh oh oh man so um while I got the housekeeping done, again, I'm looking to read some emails and all that stuff. But first, I got to let you guys know how to send me an email. So that's easy. Just pull up your keyboard, send an email to back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, hit up the YouTube channel. Just look for Solar Gray or at back in the deck on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all that other jazz that we got going down now um i want to give a major shout out um to some people that are out there right now and you guys are going to be getting your shout outs however um if you guys if you guys are doing your thing and you guys want to interact with us well guess what you guys can interact with us in a plethora of ways. You can send us an email. You can talk right here in the chat. What's going on, chat? Hey, you know, major shout outs to Clever Vixen, um, P Mansfield, Geeks Meow, Bree Bear, and all you lurkers that are out there as well. I'm not going to say I see you, but I hope you're there because I love having these conversations. So um and while we're doing the housekeeping thing you guys know what i'm about to do so if you want to head over to facebook or something and tell people to come by and show up because we're having a real conversation feel free to do that because tabs open almost infinitely but for those of you guys that are new out here check it out we got buttons i love buttons 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 who's got the buttons and right below here about us you can check us out on soundcloud on facebook on youtube on twitter on instagram you can hit up our donate button as soon as i fix that one um i got a notice from one of my patrons last week that they wanted to send a donation and my donation button was down and that just became all wacky and of course um we have this big orange button here that says our patreon which means um if you guys like what we do 
Um, how can I put this? If you get as much value out of us as a singular coffee refill, mm, ah, how refreshing. Then head on over to patreon.com slash BID underscore P and become an official decker for as little as a dollar a month. You can help us keep these lights on. And um, it's one of the major ways to make requests for what kind of shows. Just, you know, we've got the $1 tier, the $5 tier, the $10 tier. And if you guys make it to our royalty tier, um, you get all the benefits and all the stuff that we send the people, the keychains, the stickers, the, the all that other jazz. We're working on t-shirts. We're coming up. Um, we're coming up. We're banking away a lot of our Patreon money to try and come up with some sort of t-shirt deal. And of course, um, if you make that royalty tier, then I give you a shout out at every show that we do, just like I do to Her Majesty the Queen, Shannon Boom Boom Lay, our new royalty coming on in here, and that is Queen Quinn Merrill, along with our King, His Majesty Paul Mansfield, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Krull. So, that is the stuff that I had to do that was a little bit of housekeeping. You know, you got to do a little bit of housekeeping. And if you guys missed all those things, well, that's okay. Just look right there, right here, right here, right here, here, here. No, 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 not there. Here. There you go, right here. And um, our info scrolls across for the entire episode. That is just how we do it. Okay, I would say that's how we roll, but I think somebody else trademarked that. Um, anyhow. Let's uh, get on to today's subject. Now, with all the stuff that has been going on, hang on. Did I mention that the world's on fire? With all the stuff that's going on, um, we are talking, um, we are talking COVID-19, um, civil unrest, um, police brutality, um, you know, holidays that are finally being recognized, just a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. It's like, man, I want to play some games. I want to talk to some people. I just, I, I want to do some of this stuff. But being the big black man that I am, I get a lot of emails, a lot of questions, a lot of independent, um, you know, my, my, my private messengers all over the place are just blowing up like oh my god i didn't know it was so bad for you oh my god i didn't i mean that oh my god 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 you know and um i get it i, I get it and i want to thank the people that are actually reaching out in good faith okay um primarily because i'm a 43 year old man and for the entirety of my adult life i've lived a different life than most of my friends and I mean most of my friends both black and white and Latino and Asian I I personally have a unique experience but that unique experience is an aggregate um hey they hey thanks merciless ponage um that unique experience has come from being in different social circles living in different areas just traveling around doing doing all that stuff primarily to play dungeons and dragons or vampire the masquerade or riffs or battle tech or you know not warhammer 40k that's a story um and to find somewhere to live outside of where i grew up okay now i could go on and on and on and on and on about the black experience in america but Amazon has a playlist. Netflix has a playlist. There we go. Uh, um, like I said, thank you, Merciless Ponage. So what I want to talk about today, since everything we do revolves around being at a gaming table or reading comic books with friends or talking about, um, talking about these things, I want to talk a little bit more today about um, how our culture affects our art and how our art affects our entertainment. Okay, our entertainment, like our role playing games, our, you know, all that stuff. Now, I put out the announcement today about how last time we were, um, 
No, no, not not 40k, not even once. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm answering the thing. Yeah, not even once for 40k. I wanted to, but I didn't have the upfront cost to buy in. Like playing Warhammer 40k is a lot like investing in a Mac. You know, it's a whole. It's I, I hear it's amazing stuff, but you need essentially a home loan to buy in. Like when I was working at the gaming store, we used to call it 40k because, uh, <laughs> wow, that's pretty much what you needed to actually play. Especially if you want to play competitively, mortgage your house, sell your kids to China or something like that. I mean, it was just terrible, you know. Um, so the ways that art and all that stuff affects our entertainment it comes down to this a person can only create something based on the things that they know now we can learn more and try and create something okay oh my god yeah right you know yeah women y'all know what i'm talking about um when you see art and games made by men that have female characters are they really representative no but these things normalize the ideas of what stuff should be again check our last episode and we'll talk and we where we talked about representation leading to normalization and the difference between stereotypes and archetypes now today what i want to address is some pushback okay because there is a lot of pushback um check it out there was this thing, and I talked about it last week, about how, oh, hey, man, thanks, Bree Bear. Thank you. Um, oh, Sofa King. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, um, your majesty, Mr. Super? I'm glad that you're here. Um, now, last week, I talked about how Wizards of the Coast, um, how Wizards of the Coast is talking about re-evaluating their inclusion policy and you know when i started back in the deck i started it um god it's been seven years since i started this company and i started it because i got tired of being the black guy at a game store or the black guy at a cosplay convention you know i got so tired of wait you play D, &D? but you're black wait you like the Godfather, but you're black, you know, and I've worked at game stores and in coffee shops and in a lot of places where people publicly congregate. And I kept hearing, I didn't know girls played that. I didn't know girls like video games. I didn't know good. And I'm like, dude, dude, stop it. Just stop. Just, 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 just stop. Okay. A person's biological circumstances for their birth has zero bearing on the things they like to do. Okay, because guess what? D&D &D comes in Braille, y'all. And you ain't got, you know, especially with today's technology, um, there has been a bit of an uptick in online um, online role-playing games from our deaf community. And that is amazing to me. That really is. That is really, really cool. I, 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 I'm loving a whole bunch of that. But there's, there's always pushback when it comes to change. OK, one of the biggest pushbacks that I've seen. OK, and this is me putting the race card back in the deck. All right. The biggest pushback and you old school gamers out there know what I'm about to talk about. The biggest pushback that I see <laughs> is, um, oh, man. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Twitch is like, yeah, you're twitching stuff. You're brr, brr, brr. there we go. I'm sending a thanks. Um. One of the biggest pushbacks that are known by everybody in the gaming community, every single person, hey, War Mistress, in the gaming community knows the pushback of addition switching. Okay, I don't care if you're playing Warhammer 40K. It, it's work. They're what? Up to 8th edition. Um, Vampire the Masquerade got bought out by Onyx Press, and they're up to their 5th edition. Um, Dungeons & Dragons is on their 5th edition. Rifts and all that stuff. I mean, these guys are just all over the place, and there's always pushback. Always pushback to change. It's, it's you know, I've been playing d d for decades. Okay, I started with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons way back in 1987. Um, 
On YouTube, you can check the archives and look for one of the earlier episodes of Dark Side of the Room, and that's the story about how I started playing and the crappy experiences I had trying to find my first book. You know? Um, <laughs> we'll get to that. We will get to that, Geek. Um, you know, but from second edition, I remember in 2000 how much mocking and anger there was when it went to third edition and got rid of Thacko, okay? I mean, people were like, but, but, but I spent a long time trying to do that Thacko, what you did, what you did, and what is, this, what is these feet? I got feet, all my characters got feet, they got two feet, it's why they walk, you know, I, I saw all of that, and then from third edition to 3.5, you know, um, with riffs, those guys, in my experiences, the Rifts players, the Palladian people are like, there's a new edition? Cool. Because there's always outliers with a the theory. Okay. But um, it, it really comes down to things change and people resist that. All right. Um, now, I'm going to put this out there. I wasn't a really big fan of D&D 3.5. Um, and it was a personal taste thing all right um i was working at a game store um it was called the game castle it was in fullerton um when 3.5 really hit its stride around 2003 and there were so many books and everyone says the same stuff right well no it's easy to start just you know just pick up the player's handbook and the the dmg and all that stuff right that, that was cool yeah that was a thing yeah however Every time I sat down at the gaming table with somebody, they are referencing spells that were not in my books. They were playing storylines that I didn't have access to. Like, yeah, coming from crack-laden streets, I know the first hit is always free. All right, and that's what I was seeing. I was seeing like, oh yeah, I got the player's handbook. I can play some basic stuff. But then I was getting hit with erratas. And, you know, according to the Book of Vile Darkness, this was a thing. And this spell came out here, which cancels this spell. And over and over and over and over and over again. Now, there is a thing called the sunken cost fallacy. And it is the idea that once a person spends a whole lot of time and money and energy into a thing, then they are committed to that thing, whether they like it or not. And one of the things that I definitely learned was though I wasn't new to gaming, I was new to that system and there weren't really a lot of tables that were willing to take someone new and, may, and let them catch up, except the power gamers, okay? And I love my power gamers out there, I really do. It's just a matter of my playing technique, the things that I found fun weren't really on that. So that was kind of my experience with 3.5. And then when it went to Pathfinder, um, the only groups I had to play with were about efficiency and, excuse me, character optimization, um, they approached it very much in the same way that a person would approach their WoW character. And from where I was at, um, I look at things from a narrative point of view. And I've never really loved competence porn, you know, where everybody is the top thing in their field. I mean, I like some of it. I'm a big fan of Aaron Sorkin's writing. But the whole idea that a character isn't worth playing at all unless it's absolutely maxed out and absolutely efficient and, and i'm like i love efficiency i went to school for physics okay but one thing i definitely learned was that efficiency and perfection are neither efficient nor perfect in practical settings because they're one fatal flaw they're the the fatal flaw in efficiency is it's um, it's brutality okay um, it's very brittle it's very uh, fragility it's fragility is the number one thing um, if something is super efficient and then something else comes out boom it's not efficient anymore no so I like playing flawed characters I like playing characters that have have something wrong with them and why is that well 
I grew up on media in the United States as a black kid. The only black kids I ever saw, the foundation for my place, the place that I saw myself in media, in representation, was either as the special kid that needed help to escape their circumstances, a criminal or a monster, or the green guy, always the green guy, be it Piccolo, the Martian Manhunter, you know, and that has a long sort of history. You can Google it or my patrons can request that we go into it one of these episodes. Um, so the idea of being the best wasn't in my paradigm because everything that I grew up around told me that the best is something that I will never be. In fact, the paradigm that I grew up in and my interactions with the world told me that I had to be better than the best just to be included, just to be allowed in. Okay? I know there's a lot of women out there that know what I'm talking about. I know the people of color out there know what I'm talking about. So, Right now, we live in a time that's changing, and changing times always have pushback. It's actually kind of funny. I'm looking at the stuff outside, and all I can see are X-Men plots. You know, because the mutants are making themselves known, and we're kind of, you know, finally being integrated into the world as it stands. Um, so, there was an announcement. That went out um, with um, with I, I was almost gonna say TSR. You see what I mean about how old I am? Um, and there's lots of stuff. Like here is just a really quick. Let's see if I can find this here. This is a quick Google search. Okay, this is just the first page. I typed in inclusion in D&D. I got 2,070,000 results. And, you know, creators rethinking race in D&D, blinded by the role, critical fail of disability in D&D. You know, um, there's a lot of stuff on that. But I don't sleep a whole lot. I don't know if I'm stuck in this cycle because I end up reading comments. And last week, I talked about how representation matters in, an, in a conversation on that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook. Um, and someone said, if you need a fictional character to identify with and make believe, then you have a mental problem. And I'm like, really? Because this whole big conversation about, well, I don't see why they got to change stuff. Blah, 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 blah. And these things always come from the people who are already included. Okay. Um, I was in a conversation with someone and they were talking about reverse racism and things like that. And there was this big thing of, well, there's a Black History Month. Well, why can't there be a White History Month? And there's a Black Student Union. Why can't there be a, a White Student Union at colleges? And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Instead of letting the horns grow and throwing fireballs at them one after another after another from one of my many, many magical artifacts, I asked a question. Um... Who would be included in that? Okay. Um, if people want White History Month, okay, cool. Gonna have White History Month in schools. All right, fantastic. What would be taught that isn't already in the history books? What would be taught? What's the syllabus? I'm like, come up with a syllabus for that and we can talk about it. And that's when the insults start flying. That's when they're like, oh, you're just being condescending. You're, 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 you're. And there's always a bit of pushback. So I, um, I engage with people and I looked up this thing 
well, people ask me like, well, I got some questions and where do I start reading and what papers can I read and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's a whole thing. I, I'm always good at recommending a book if you want to do some research on that kind of thing. And um, in one of the, in one of the articles that two of my patrons talked to me about this morning, they brought up um, in an article called the uh, the autonomy of white guilt, or the anatomy of white guilt. Um, you can find it at Racial Equality Tools. Um, but in that article, okay, um, in that article, it's seven pages, so that's not a whole lot. They talked about um, four things, four defense mechanisms. Um, that these feelings of guilt respond and that is amnesia anesthesia indifference and denial so i want to talk about those for a hot minute first let me check out what the viewer count is because <laughs> yeah by this point okay yeah cool 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 by this point the conversation i tend to lose a whole bunch of stuff but yeah amnesia anesthesia indifference and denial now, amnesia is a big one. Um, amnesia is a really, really big one that I see all the time. And that is the convenient forgetting of a whole lot of different things. I see it on a micro level and on a macro level. Um, when they told me about those four things, I was able to cite examples without even having read the article. And they were like, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. I've kind of been dealing with it since I was 12 and I had a growth spurt that put me over six feet, six feet um, tall. Now, um, yeah, so the amnesia is really big. We tend to forget a lot of stuff, okay? And the first thing, the amnesia and the denial, they work really well as a circle into each other i mean they they feed into each other so directly it's crazy um and we've seen this especially in the gaming community when one of the older gamers come around and they're like uh, uh, uh hey remember what a pain in the butt thaco was i'm cool with third edition um i sit up with fifth edition because i love fifth edition i really do primarily because i'm really i'm really attuned to new players and it's got a much shallower learning curve than 3.5 ever did. And so, um, yeah, when I talk about the fifth edition thing, you know, um, people are like, yeah, fifth edition, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, are you forgetting that you made this same stink at third edition when that came out? Um, like, I'm not going to lie. Everyone I've ever known, including myself, pushes back against stuff. You should have seen me when Star Trek The Next Generation came on. I was a t original series dude. And when I first watched um, Star Trek The Next Generation, I'm like, that ain't Kirk. Who's this old shriveled up dude? That guy, that guy is more like Kirk. Why ain't he the captain? Talking about Riker, you know, going, I just want more of what I've always had. I get that, okay? So I try not to forget, but even I do, you know? Um, when people talk to me about how, oh, fifth edition is too simple, I'm like, remember in 3.5 that you would have like a minus five penalty to a skill that you didn't have? So even trying something for the first time came with punishment, where in fifth edition, you just don't get the bonus. You know, <laughs> I mean, that that's, I'm a big fan of that. Um, so when these things um, happen in real life, we tend to forget how bad things were back then. Um, I hope I don't end up getting trolled for this type of thing, but I probably will. You know, this whole make America great again philosophy are coming from people that don't remember the 1950s. You know, they don't remember polio and, um, the, not the economic downturn, but they definitely don't remember Jim Crow, at least the good ones don't. You know, they don't remember Jim Crow. They don't remember the time where their grandmother couldn't leave the hospital unless their grandfather or their grand uncle were there to take their mama home. They don't remember the stuff that we used to eat back then. I do. And if you want a taste of making America great again, 
what I will say is this. Oh, thanks, Commander Root. And thank you, Vixen. Um, what I will say is you want to taste to make America great again? Look online for 1950s cooking recipes and start making casseroles out of various cream of something soup. All right. You want to make America great again? Watch an episode of My Favorite Martian or um, or Leave it to Beaver or and I'm talking like not unironically. I mean, watch and take seriously the Batman TV show with Adam West. Like we look at all that stuff and we joke and all that stuff now, but there was a time where people took those things seriously. You know, I I was a teenager during the Joe Schumacher years, rest in peace, you know, bless his soul. Um, and, you know, I was all in on Batman forever. I'm, uh, I will, I will own that. Okay, I will own it. I loved Jim Carrey as the Riddler. He reminded me of the illegitimate love, uh, the illegitimate love child born of a drunken, drunken, drunken night of passion between Frank Gorshin and Robin Williams, and I loved it. Um, I liked Nicole Kidman as I've always have liked Nicole Kidman. You know, I mean, it's it it really, <laughs> yeah, prevalence of gelatin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See, that's what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know, you know, gelatin in everything back in those days you know um so yeah that that's the major thing but you know we forget the bad stuff it was even said in the watchman um the older you get the more you only remember the good stuff okay and when those things happen <laughs> uh oh my god okay the chat is killing me right now baloney cake exactly you know that's a taste of america when it was great baloney cake with gelatin and peas everything had peas cake had peas <laughs> you know um so you know we tend to forget that but then we go to anesthesia and i see that everywhere with the amount of binge drinking um i i, I told someone the other day i don't have anything against cards against humanity as a game well i kind of do because i don't like anything that's a popularity contest um, but the past 14 board game nights that I've gone to in various social circles never failed to put away a game that was a little complex, get stupidly drunk, and I mean stupidly drunk, and play card against, um, cards against, uh, humanity. That, that's what every board game night would fall into. Um, I live in California, as you guys know, the Wizard's Tower is set up here, and weed is now legal here, so people get marijuana dropped off to their doorstep, doorstep, okay, and do you know how difficult it is teaching someone to play Necromunda when they're four bong hits in? Oh my god, you know, um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's a real thing, but we anesthetize. A lot of the pain i mean our whole um our whole society right now is built on pleasure okay um a whole lot of bread and circuses um again i am a social justice warrior and i wear that with pride and when i'm arguing with people out there they're like oh with these smartphones blah 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 and i'm like bro you're looking at that stuff like it's the 1980s okay luxuries today in the United States, I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but luxuries are stupid cheap today. Stupid cheap. Oh my God. Um, here in the studio, okay, um, I've got a lot of electronic equipment. I'm working off three laptops. I've got, um, I've got monitors everywhere. I've got a 52 inch TV in here that I use as a monitor. And you know how much I paid for it? nothing i didn't pay a dime people give this crap away i mean this is stuff that when i was a kid okay when i was a kid we were like oh my god we finally got a a, a big screen tv and it was a piece of furniture okay you could sleep on the big screen tv that's how big it was it took three people to get it in the door okay get it in the door now we're like, ah, I don't like the resolution on that TV, and we just throw it in the damn alley, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, 
And it's not because we're that rich, okay? Again, I live in, I, I live in Southern California. I grew up in Los Angeles. And a 52 inch big screen TV with remote control and internet access, a hundred bucks, 100 bucks. Somewhere to live? <laughs> a two bedroom apartment, $2,700. Okay, back when I was growing up, it was the opposite. You know, your, your essentials were dirt cheap. You know, everybody had a chicken in the pot because chicken was like $2 for an entire chicken. You know, I um, I grew up eating chicken and cornflakes because that's what we could afford now. You know, or that was what we could afford back then. Um, chicken and cornflakes every night. Cornflakes. Cornflakes every, every day. Chicken every night. Blah, blah, blah. But my mom had to save up for three months to get me my first computer. And that first computer didn't even come with a mouse. You know, it had what was called, um, God, I don't even remember the resolution, but this was a screen that was pre VGA. And we're talking like 1992, like the, the Nintendo entertainment system was old hat by then. And the only stuff that I could afford for computer stuff was a 20 pound screen that was just green that was it it was green that that's all it was it was green um and it had floppy disks you know and it didn't have a mouse you know that that was the computer that i had um when the apple 2c had been outdated by the big square one so yeah things have shifted and there was pushback against that now there um but today we anesthetize our stuff and falling into all these very cool luxuries. You know, the camera on these phones, the, the, this is like an old smartphone that somebody gave me. And it's got a camera that I could film this show on and you wouldn't notice a difference in video quality. You know, and that is just weird. <laughs> yeah, maybe Oregon Trail, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, Oregon Trail, the most advanced video game that I could play during the days of Mortal Kombat 1 on the Sega Genesis. You, you see what I mean? But those were luxuries back then, okay? Um, and today, it's the opposite, okay? It's easy to spend five or $600 at the grocery store for food for the week. It, it's easy to do that, where when I was growing up, that was like a month's worth of food. Um, but... My mom's mortgage was maybe $600 for a three bedroom house on an 8,000 square foot lot. Now, granted, that's still really, 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 really cheap for back then because I grew up in the ghetto. But a rental in her neighborhood today, if I were going to go to it, would still be $3,000 a month for the same thing. $3,000 a month to live in the hood. Okay, I, w I was checking out that, you know. Um... So things have changed, but we've, we spend so much time with our anesthesia um, that we don't feel anything. And that does tend to lead to an indifference, you know? <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. I'm just, look, I'm 43. Um, we ain't old, all right? We're just at a higher level. I'm a level 43 human. That's what I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so that leads to an, you know, but that kind, of, that kind of thing leads to an indifference because since our everyday complications are so big, how am I going to put food on the table? How am I going to pay the rent? You know, how am I going to pay for my kid's college? Oh my God. You know, my kid is graduating in December and I still may have to shell out another 15 grand. I don't know. Um, that we become indifferent to the changes or we become indifferent to the changes that need to be made. And so we push back against all that stuff, you know? Um, it, it, it really comes down to like, hey, the representation of women in role-playing games, that's never been cool. You know, never, okay? Back in my days of Ren Fair, I tried on a chainmail bikini. And you know what? One, cold as crap. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> um, and two, that wouldn't stop an arrow. 
you know but that's that's how we draw our women when we think of role play stuff um you know and when the women who want to play these games say dude i don't feel comfortable being a sex object why is that such a big deal you know i i took a look at um yeah very chafy very very chafy exactly oh ooh, god no very 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 chafy you know arming coats happen for a reason but they don't happen with chain male bikinis um you know when i as a black dude was playing in most fantasy settings um sure i could play a character with black skin but i only had to choose from the cultures that were there so yeah i could play a dude with black skin but i've got no ancestral heritage you know and being black in america that's already a pretty deep wound but again indifference if it doesn't affect me directly right now i don't have time to care about it okay this is one of the reasons that the world is on fire okay um you know the environment is in danger because the people before us were so busy making money that they didn't care about toxic waste and um environmental uh environmental stuff and the people before them did not care about hunting rhinos into extinction or hunting bison from the backs of freaking moving trains with rifles you know um um the police brutality thing that's sweeping the headlines all the time yeah that was a that that has been a thing you know i i let my partner this morning hear the body count of body count's first album back from 92 like right after the la riots where we were talking about the same thing um you know uh representation in media again count the black people from all the 1950 shows put together and there are less than 10 you know so what does that do like i said it normalizes the ideas of certain sex of people to people that have never had any exposure to that you know you should see the look on people's faces when i tell them i like country music you know, and I do. I really like country music. As a matter of fact, I, I let my partner yesterday hear Whiskey Lullaby from Black, from Brad Paisley um, for the first time. And of course, she cried because she's not a robot. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was like, whoa, that that's a real country song. I'm like, it's a real country song in that old country style, you know, and that is something that I dig. But at the same time, I do the same thing with lots of stuff because people are diverse we get around we like different things for different reasons but you wouldn't know that by looking at art okay so this is why representation is big but the pushback comes from this fear of being a victim to the exclusion or a victim of the exclusion um from um that the that the newly included people have come in and that is one of the things <laughs> oh being outdated yeah the fear of being outdated exactly glenn um the fear of being outdated of being um marginalized you know um i talk to a lot of people about gender studies and the roles of sex and things like that because part of being a game master is being a writer that's just what you got to do and i want to keep my stuff prevalent um and when it comes to gender studies and stuff like that there is a whole lot of passion and all that other stuff and again i'm really really leftist i'm really open i'm just that guy but i brought up um the problem with these roles is that they've never actually been defined and codified so when the me too movement was out there were a lot of mediocre i'm not gonna say good just mediocre males out there going well what am i supposed to say um we've come to a world right now where we're quick to point out what's bad this is bad that is bad this is bad that is bad this is bad uh racism bad sexism bad homophobia is bad this statement is bad that statement is bad all that stuff but we haven't yet made it to defining a protocol that works for people 
okay? Um, the last thing that I want to do is alienate someone because of the circumstances of their birth. Um, however, and this is a systemic thing, since our language um, in everyday interactions is so normalized, it's one thing to say, you can't say those words, you can't use those things, but then it comes, um, but that's fine. We can take out the thing, but what do we put in its place? Okay. Um, like I said, I know a lot of good people. I know a lot of good white people saying, okay, all right, cool. So how can I help? What can I do? Um, I know a lot of good men that are like, I don't want to make the women that I meet in my life. Um, feel unsafe so how can I make them feel safe like what actions can I do that are on the upside you know um, I've been struggling with this when it comes to um, my inadvertent ableism okay I know a lot of people with a lot of disabilities and I'm not sure how to interact you know and um, it's in a weird place now one of the people right here in the chat brings up a big thing um, these things do reflect on the gaming table in a lot of subtle ways that we have a little time to talk about today um that social contract that we talk about requires a lot of trust from both sides toward both sides okay um this is really really important you know if you're going to sit at a gaming table with someone um, if you're going to make the choice to be in someone's company, you have to trust that they are not intending on harming you. And <clears throat> when addressing the ways that they harm you, I find I've had more success in approaching it from an educational standpoint than from a retaliatory standpoint and I have to put that out there because I got some scars that run deep and it's very very human to want to hit back okay to do that pushback to say um to say um well that hurts me and and hit with the what about isms and all that other stuff you know I get it okay people have been offending me as a black dude for decades and I'm more tired than I ever have been okay and even when you do try and approach it um, to the with that educational thing with compassion and all that stuff we come across the last bit in um, the things that cause the pushback denial I'm not like that. I'm not sexist. I'm not racist. I'm not ableist. I'm not. And, I'm, and I got some bad news for you guys. Even saying things. Even saying things like, I'm not saying that you are that person at your core. But I am saying that the action that you took is an action that falls into that category. Like, you are not what you do, but what you did was harmful. I even equate it to um, broken glass. You know, uh, you don't have to be a jerk to knock a glass off of a countertop. And whether or not you are a jerk or whether or not you mean it, that does not change the fact that there is now broken glass and liquid on the floor that needs to be cleaned up. Okay? The intentions of the actions do not erase the impact. But people deny because, again, we come from a culture of anesthesia and judgment. So they're judging themselves. They're afraid that you're judging them. And so they're denying it. Well, I don't do that kind of thing. Blah, blah, blah. We covered this in my episode of Above the Line and Below the Line Isms. Um, some of you guys might remember this. Oh, wait, wrong one. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, A lot of you guys might remember this particular um this particular diagram that I had. And this is the above the line and below the line diagram on um, racism, okay? Or more to the point, white supremacy, okay? Um, I'm trying to compile one for um, male hierarchy and, you know, all the other systems that have, I'm gonna say unintentionally, but very effectively 
kept us from living in a society of equity all right um so yeah it's um it, it does hurt you know uh these things do hurt and we want to deny those things because who wants pain except for about three percent of the population okay maybe three percent of the population are masochists don't quote me but i know it's small um and the rest of them you know most of us don't want to hurt we don't want to have pain and that's understandable okay um but the fact is sorry that's part of being alive you know my great grandmother used to tell me there's no such thing as pain without or as growth without pain even growing hurts you know um so yeah it, it, it these are a lot of the things that come out so when people do the pushback i don't really have a whole lot of magic bullet solutions okay i don't um the one thing i will say is to not fall into traps um you can do a youtube study on logical fallacies so you can see when people are just trying to make you look stupid um or when they're just garbage people i mean there are garbage people in the world not nearly as many as the internet would make you think <laughs> but there are some out there okay um <clears throat> but yeah but the important thing is to recognize that all of these things are natural occurrences okay there is going to be pushback like i said the pushback against uh the when D, &D went to fourth edition so many people pushed back and they went to pathfinder because they didn't want to change what they already knew now granted broken clocks and all that stuff fourth edition was a game i didn't like it very much and i don't know many people who do um but it was real it happened and then the pushback from pathfinder um players against fifth edition players i'm like really guys but we're all just playing games you know it, it's just a thing um but there's a lot of stuff going on there the important thing to understand is to not hold the weight of changing the entire culture on your shoulders in one conversation okay um again i make it very very clear people are welcome at my table they are um when people hear about what i do on this channel and i tell them we are here speaking from the perspective of people of color women lgbtq plus um the disabled and the fiscally disenfranchised and they're like well that's not cool that you're leaving white guys out and i'm like uh dude do you have nowhere else on the internet to go and have these discussions you know there's nowhere for you there there's nowhere else Matter of fact, there are, are you saying you're down to less than 10% of the internet to have these conversations, you know, to get these perspectives? Cause I mean, you know, it, it, it's really one of those things. And it's not that people aren't, it's not that um, the majority of groups aren't welcomed. It's just, this isn't the space that they get to command. Okay, that that's a big thing. Um, you know, it, it's it's really a big thing. Um, <clears throat> Glenn, you should hit me up on Facebook. We'll discuss that a lot, a lot better. Not because I don't want to talk about it, but because <laughs> that's our time. Um, that is really our time. So I want to thank you guys for showing up, for sticking out with the discussion. Um, we didn't get any email questions today. I would go a little bit over, but, um, I got to talk to my daughter about the next semester of college coming up because things that hurt. Um, so, yeah, that is a thing. But, you know, I can stick around and talk a bit in the chat a little bit after. But I want to thank you guys for showing up. Major props to um, our patrons out there, specifically Paul Mansfield, um, Jennifer Kroll, Quinn Merrill and Shannon Lay, you know, thank you guys for for lift, doing so much of the heavy lifting. And um yeah. Um hold up, I'm just getting this. Yeah, I can stick around in the chat here afterwards. So, you know, don't click off the channel after after we're out, all right? Um but yeah. 
And um, so yeah, so with that, um, I want to thank you guys. And remember, if anybody tells you that you are not welcome, welcomed to be included because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, gender identity, creed, your sexual orientation, your disabilities, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Source. We're saying thank you guys, and we will see you guys tomorrow on the dark side of the room.